Now you might be saying my cat is too picky and he only wants his dry food. And that could be because of flavor enhancer palatins that manufacturers add to the product. So there was a review in November, 2021. So very recently, there was a review of these dry food flavor enhancer palatins. And the review states, dry pet foods with less than 20% moisture content are generally prepared using primarily farinaceous ingredients. And farinaceous means wheat, basically starchy ingredients, wheat, oats, and other cereal grains. And they even clarify this in the review. So dry foods are made of primarily wheats and cereals and oats, along with a small proportion of proteinaceous materials. And proteinaceous means animal. So primarily cereal grains and oats in very small proportion of meat. And manufacturers know that cats aren't grain and carb and starchy ingredient eaters by choice. So they have to invent a way to make the food more enticing and more palatable for the cat. And they do this with these flavor enhancer palatins. Since it's very low in meat-based protein, it's also important to have the cat eat as much of it as possible so that it's actually nutritious because it's low in meat-based protein and that's exactly what the cat needs. So when you're feeding a very, very high carb, high starchy ingredient cat food, it's difficult for your cat to get the proper nutrition that he needs. This is another downside of dry food because now your cat is more likely to overeat because he needs literally needs more of it because it's very low in meat protein. And that's just going to increase your cat's weight and it's it just goes downhill from there. So you might be asking, where can I spot these palatins on the food label? So this review states that examples of these palatins include amino acids. So there's a long list of them, L-cysteine, L-lysine, L-tryptophan, L-tyrosine. Now, of course, Amino acids are important for cats. I mean, that's what protein is, and cats need protein. But the most natural and abundant source of all of these amino acids is meat. So cats would get all of their amino acids from their prey. And we all know about taurine. It isn't listed as one of these flavor enhancers. But just as an example, the mouse's heart is pretty much the highest in taurine that you can find. So all of these amino acids that are listed here can be found in meat. There's no reason to add them back into the product, but with dry food, you have to because it's low in meat-based protein. Give me a polydactyl thumbs up if this is helpful so far so more cat parents that want to feed their cat better can find this video. Thank you. The next example they give is fat or fatty acids. And if we look at the patent, there are citations from many recommended brands of pet food. And if we hover over the animal feeding stuffs for material of animal origin, and we go into the narrower section, it states, animal feeding stuffs from material of animal origin from waste material, e.g. feathers, bones, or skin. Now, again, of course, the cat would eat the entire prey in the wild. That would include the feathers or the fur, the skin, and the bones. However, that's just a small amount of the entire prey. For example, just the bones alone, that's usually about 7 to 10% on average. The, The bulk of the whole prey is muscle meat heart, all the muscular organs like tongue, you know, the arms and the legs and the, and the body. So majority of that protein comes from the muscle meats. So adding things like feathers and bones and skin is important, but that shouldn't be the sole source of the protein. We shouldn't rely on just the minimum and then the rest is all carbs. Other examples of these flavor enhancer palatins include animal digests from beef, pork, poultry, or fish, etc. Organic acids such as phosphoric acid, citric acid, lactic acid, and a few others. Then there's also phosphates, pyrophosphates, and polyphosphates. They've been explored as potential palatins in dry pet foods. And the review states, although there are some concerns regarding their long-term effects, on renal functions of pets. Now I'm going to make an entirely separate video on that topic next week, but first let's take a look at some examples of cat food labels so we can highlight where these palatins 
occur. So I changed the names of the of the cat foods, but I'm sure you can guess which one is which. So the first one that we'll take a look at is Unroyal Canon. <laughs> they have multiple phosphates like pyrophosphate, polyphosphate, tripolyphosphate, and citric acid. The next one that we'll take a look at is Rue Snuffalo. <laughs> We have chicken fat, polyphosphate, and L-lysine. Next, we'll take a look at Pills Riot. And we have pork fat, L-lysine, lactic acid, a phosphate, and a polyphosphate. Now, again, I understand that cats need amino acids. They need fat, but and dry food needs preservatives, but... The cat's natural diet would already include these things. We shouldn't have to rely on additives for the cat's food to be complete. We should rely on the base of the actual food itself rather than just adding all these things to a very carb and starchy rich food that has very little meat in it. Now I hear you saying, all right, all right, Jess, I get it. I don't want to feed these ingredients, but all my cat wants to eat is dry food. I would suggest using my transition plan right over Mia, specifically formulated for picky cats. And if you're unsure of it, look at the comments, take a, take a look. There are many other cat parents that are in the same position as you. They had a very picky cat and the transition plan worked for them. Thank you so much for watching.